Oh my god. Hello, good evening. Hello, hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you, you. Doing great. Do you remember the last class topic? Me no because I I came I, I couldn't, couldn't I couldn't uh, be be the class on Friday. I missed Friday's class. I miss Friday class. Good. Okay. Ivan, good evening. Excuse me. Good evening, mister. How's it going? Did you practice? Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Step by step, teacher. Step by step. Step by step. Okay. Step by step. Oh, baby. Gonna get <laughs> New kids on the line. Man, that, that was music. Not today's music. Uh, God. Hey, uh, what was last conversation, last uh, topic? I'm sorry. We were identifying training needs, right? Identifying training needs on your department. Okay. And I believe we were about to do um, a presentation. I said we were going to do a presentation, did we? Didn't we? Yep, that's what we did. Then we found some definitions for business needs and goals, gaps, skills analysis, survey, and performance appraisal. That was the last thing we did on your workbook. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do so through some warm up since today is the first class of the week. And let me just get that on here. Are we in unit two? This is class number nine. Yeah, we're finishing unit two. Gap skills analysis, performance appraisal. Then we have the importance of training and development in the workplace. But I'm wondering if we read Yep, we read about it. My God, I lost it. Here it is on Tuesday. Okay. Budget, delivery style. Yeah, and you did a presentation, but we didn't work on. Sorry, guys, I'm just talking to myself. In just a minute. Workplace. 
Yep. There it is. This is it. Okay. Job satisfaction, saving time and cost, fashion and self esteem. Okay. So I need some employee turnover cost, factors, assessment. Okay. We'll go through some bullet points tonight about the effects of training on employee performance. Just today's topic. Basic elements to consider when selecting a training option. Okay, so let me do the attendance first uh, before we move on, before we start the class, as it is already 8.06. Good evening, Adriana. Good evening. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> good, 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 good. Where is, there it is. Okay. There you are. Okay, Adriana Jose Serna Duran. Present. Daniel Antonio Luna. Erika Jasmin Martinez Carpio. Present. Are you, do are you doing better? A little bit, but still. <laughs> okay. So sorry to hear that. Hope you get better. Fatima Denise Aguilar Marquez. Present. Thank you. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Okay. Ivan Petrovic Guzmán Aquino. Present. Okay. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Jolman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Okay. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Okay. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Nelson Antonio de Rodas Rosales. Present. Okay. Ruth Isela Joaquín Flores. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Thank you. And Vanessa Noemí Reyes Lemos. Present. Okay, so tonight we have to discuss the basic elements to consider when selecting a training option and that's part of your workbook if I'm not mistaken. Just a minute, please. So if you remember, uh, we talked a lot about uh, different training options. Which ones do you remember the most? What is like the one that you said, oh my God, this this sounds good. This will be my, my training option. Or just like that, right? Like what's, this This will be my training option. I mean, I, I for example, me, I don't like online trainings. I mean, to receive a training, to work, uh, in a company, I didn't like the training on my other job because if it was like this, virtual, using Teams, do you know Teams in Windows? So yeah, we used Teams and that was over three years ago. Three years ago, I, I received the training to work on that company. And up until today, three years later, I don't know my coworkers. <laughs> I had never seen my coworkers. That's weird, right? Feels really weird. I don't know anybody, not even my boss. Because there was no Christmas party. There has been no Christmas party. So I don't know them. It's really weird. Okay. So what's the training option that you feel like fits you? What is the best training option for you? For me, teacher, uh, I think uh, opposite, like you, opposite. I think the other way around. I think the other way around. Yeah. 
you 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 write when you say it's uh, impersonal. Impersonal, this is could say impersonal because never never change. Uh, you can change opinion, you can talk, but uh, I think it's in, in personal, but is uh, the most easy? Is the easier. The easiest. 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 Super superlatives, easiest. The easiest. Mm -hmm. uh, easiest because you can get training in every every place. If you have a connection, if you have a adequado, adequated and the uh, uh, device, you can get different type of training, but not not uh, much training because maybe if you you need a uh, training for uh, first aid, it's not it's not good. But if I I get training about um, I don't know um, economic uh, topics, mm -hmm. I can get uh, online online training. Is is but is cheaper, is uh, accessible, and uh, maybe have a lot training like uh, like now. It's difficult if if you go to the uh, classroom. It's necessary a uh, use a car, park, uh, food, and different different uh, kind. Forget that training. Training online is for me is is a good option, teacher. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Um... As I told you before, we need to work on four versus two, two versus four to get that training. Look, look at your chat. Uh, um, you can take that training anywhere, everywhere. Everywhere you go, you can be trained. You can get that virtual training. Great job. Um, adequate, adequate, new word. It's more adequate. Okay, uh, they create. It's not good. I think that that option is not good. I think that option, I think it wouldn't work. It wouldn't, that's what you were trying to say. No funcionaria. It wouldn't work. The virtual training for this, this, and that, it wouldn't work. Okay, have a lot training, have a lot of, have a lot training. No, have a lot of training. Um, forget that training, no, to get that training. Simple. Everybody, remember, four, after four, you have a noun or a verb in ING. For example, um, running is good for your health. Running is good for your health. Running is good to make you healthier. Running is good to make you healthier. See the difference? Okay. Okay. Becoming a thief, becoming a thief is good for running. Oh, you didn't get it. <laughs> no, volverse ladrón es bueno para correr. Becoming a thief is good for running, for running. Don't pay attention to my advices. It's not a good advice. Okay, good. Anybody else? Uh, in my case, it's, the only is, is, is interesting option. My my partner, my uh, classmate, Hector, is, is right. I think uh, the, the workshop is... Uh, it's a more practice for me because um, they do uh, activities and the topic and, and, and learn more. So for you, uh, a live training is better. Yeah. 
uh, online is 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 interesting is it's good mm -hmm. be honest ivan <laughs> I, no, get, no. I get i no, get sleepy no. uh, the, uh, uh, the depend depend the the the, the topic but for example actually uh, uh i received uh, the other the other class the topic is the finance uh, uh the finance in the in the class uh teacher uh, teacher teach <laughs> Teacher teach uh, the the exercise exercise the the for example uh, BP BP is ba valor uh, in the in Spanish valor is the neto BN BN uh, in the case the the, the class in English is different because uh, it's my the speak uh, listening. Um, you know, right typing in the in the case the the the, the classes the exercise the the numbers okay good good job let me give you the feedback really quick for example let me see that uh, for example for example, currently, I think this is present simple. I think you're trying to say, I'm receiving. Are you receiving these classes currently? Yeah. Okay. So, see, look at your chat. Uh, first, we said, it's a more practice for me. It's more practical. For me, it's more practical. Uh, it's more practical. Practical. Uh, practical. More practical, right? It's more practical for me. Si quería decir que es más movido, más interactiva la clase, debería de usar. It's more dynamic. Mm. Right? It's more, din more dynamic la clase, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, actually, I received the class. For example, currently, I'm receiving the I, I don't know, economics class or, right, English class. Mm -hmm. The teacher teach. Like the teacher no, taught. No. The teacher taught. Talk, right? talk. Taught. Pass. Taught. Taught. La pronunciación del verbo teach en pasado es bien sencilla. Es T-O-T. Taught. 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 That's it. Mm -hmm. um, try to practice that. I... Um, okay, she taught. She taught us about. She she taught us about. Teacher, she, teacher taught. Teacher taught. Okay, she taught us about. She taught us. She taught us. She taught us about. Cuando va una vocal después de esa t, no? She taught us. Taught us. She mm -hmm. taught. She taught me. She. Um, okay, she taught about. She taught about this. Okay, good. Mm, pronunciation. Hey, don't forget, guys, the best way to, to improve your grammar is just practicing the diet that I send you in the group. Porque lo que no se está practicando se, se nos olvida. Eso va para todos. Eh? Se te olvidó el presente perfecto. Agarrar la dieta, empezar a ser positivo, negativo, pregunta. Positivo, negativo, pregunta. Right? Keep playing with the grammar. Every day on Monday you do simple present, Tuesday you do something else, and etc. Okay, so let's practice some conversations, but this time I would like to hear you. So let's have a chip chat. You remember that? Adriana, what was it? What was a chip chat? It's like a conversation that you have in a a few minutes, for example. <laughs> exactly. So, who wants to throw a topic? Who wants to throw a topic?
<ríe> tan difícil it is. Si fuese en español la clase y les digo, ah, ¿de qué hablamos? Hmm. Right? So the, the same thing. Salvadorian team, soccer, very bad. <laughs> no, no, really football. We're going to talk about soccer. You know, I, I heard there was a game. Was there a game? An important game? No. no? What ah, happened? But yes, yes. Yes, because uh, no don't have a chance for participate in the in the uh the, the World Cup. Huh? The World Cup El Salvador. No, no, World Cup, no. It's a, a, <laughs> I don't know a Concacaf Cup. Cup. Ah, Cup. Conca, Cup. Conca champion. Aha, uh -huh, Conca champion. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's a, a Central and North American. A team, national team, but Salvadorian teams they can't win at uh, Jamaica, I think. If you don't win Jamaica, you can win uh, Mexico or United States or Canada. Jamaica. Very bad selection. <laughs> you make her under, under zero. Okay. Let me give you a topic. Tell me how's your, you know what? I, I would like to teach you something so you can practice more speaking. Okay, let's use to speak um, the use of used to. Okay, and this, you're going to use it for um, how do you call this uh, in Spanish? Oh, uh, God. When you get accustomed to do something, how do you call that? It's not a routine. It's just something that you used to do. OK, let me go straight to the grammar. So. When you want to say that you used to do something in the past, you're going to use used. For example, if it is in past, I used to. And then you have a verb in simple present. For example, Arena. Mm, I, I used to visit my grandmother every weekend. <laughs> Okay, what if you wanted to say that there was something in that specific place, then you have to use there used to, and the same thing, you have a verb, but in this case, you're talking about a uh, space, right? There used to be a, uh, when I was a kid, there used to be a very special place for me in my neighborhood. Um, it was a mirador, you know, a place to to uh, to look at the landscaping. It was amazing, you know. There used to be a big basketball court where you, we used to play. It was amazing. Give me just a second. I'm so sorry. My girl has a tantrum. You know what is a tantrum? Adriana, do you still do tantrums? Mm -hmm. To your dad? I don't want to take a shower. I'm not <laughs> taking a shower. It's my nah. I don't mm -hmm. want to go to school. You like... <laughs> exactly, that's the word. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, going back. So there used to be an amazing place. There used to be a pupuseria that I loved. Okay, used to. And this is in simple past. Okay. There used to, I used to, 
Uh, we used to run. Now, don't forget, the verb goes in base form. You got it? Yep. Okay, so these are things that you got used to, that you used to do. I forgot the name in Spanish. I'm trying to remember it, uh, but it's I just... I think it's like solía. Uh -huh, exactly. That's that's the word in Spanish. Uh, yo solía. Okay, nosotros solíamos. Llevar a cabo tal acción. So in Spanish, I can't remember what kind of situation this is. But you're remembering. So tell me, how did your neighborhood, oh my God, neighborhood, I don't like this word. Is that right? No, there's a T in the middle, right? T, uh huh. Neighborhood used to be. So, in other words, how was your childhood? How did your neighborhood used to be? Oh, look at this. This is a question, right? How did your neighborhood used to be? It's a question, right? And I have the auxiliary. So, how did your neighborhood used to be? Let me throw you an example. Um, I'm, Sal I'm Santa Necan. <laughs> I'm from Santa Ana, actually. I was, I was born in San Salvador, but rattling my parents. Um, well, yeah, my parents are from. My mother was from Candelaria la Frontera, and my dad was from San Eco, right? So, um, from age zero to seven. I was raised in San Salvador. And then my parents got divorced. Oh, without the T, thank you, thank you, Erika. Thank you. Um, my parents got divorced and then we were, we are four, we were four, now we are six, long story short. We got split it, listen, we got split it. Two, my brother and I, were sent with my grandma from my father's side, okay? And my other two brothers were sent with my grandma from my mother's side. Got it? Yeah? So my brother and I were sent to Santa Ana, and my other two brothers were sent to Candelaria La Frontera. We were split. My mother moved to the States, and my father stood with my brother and me with his mother, right? My grandma. So I was raised by my grandma in Santa Ana until I was 16. So living in Santa Ana was amazing. I mean, I loved studying at the Instituto Nacional de Santa Ana in Uninsa. It was amazing because it, it was huge. I mean, so on my neighborhood, they still call it El Redondel, although the name of the, of the neighborhood is El Palmar. That's the name of the neighborhood. Every day was an adventure. I mean, I used to deliver tortillas, right? My grandma used to make tortillas. But in the morning, she used to send my brother and me to, to deliver bread. So we used to go to a bakery, grab the sacks, grab the sacks. I remember I used to have two and two or three and three sacks of bread. And I was like eight years old. With my brother, we used to go with the sacks and sell the bread or resell the bread, resell the bread, basically. Then after that, we used to go to bed again sometimes. And at noon, we used to go and deliver the tortillas. After that, go to school, you know. But in the evenings, in the evenings, we used to go to El Redondel to the basketball courts and play basketball until 9 p.m. sometimes. Then we used to get home and eat a lot, you know, like eggs, beans, avocado, whatever. Man, it was amazing. Once we had eaten, my grandma used to uh, set my brother and me next to the fireplace, you know, next to the kitchen, which was a wooden kitchen, let's say. Your Tala, where is Taya? 
I don't know. Tall. Oh, I'm tall. Yeah, I'm kind of tall. And then the thing is that my ma my grandma used to set us around the kitchen and we used to sing. Do you, if you like Pedro Infante, right? She mm -hmm. was she was raised in a hospice. She was raised by by no, nuns, by nuns. And and she loved singing, so she trained us on singing, and it was amazing. After that, at about 10 p.m., we used to hang out with the neighbors, go and play hide and seek. You know what is hide and seek? Yeah? Or arranca cebolla. No, you don't know what is hide and seek. Con yeah. yeah, and then at about 11 p.m., we used to go to bed. Can you? <laughs> I mean, 11 p.m. <laughs> 11 p.m. There were gangs. A late, late night. Yes, there were gangs. There were gangs in Santa Ana, but we were kids playing all around. You know, we had no problem with nobody. Mm. It was an, for me, now, now that I think, it was an amazing childhood. I didn't have a bike. I didn't have a basketball ball, you know, but there was always someone mm. in the basketball court. Man, the, the basketball matches were insane you know we used to um even fight with each other no fault i mean nobody could say oh fault fault no it wasn't like macho you know <laughs> playing basketball <laughs> macho, man. <laughs> macho man playing basketball that was amazing but it used to be very calm very safe um no drugs you know well i mean there were kids right on those things, but we didn't pay attention to those things. It used to be amazing growing up that way, don't you think? Okay. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Uh, or questions? Words that I mentioned that you were like, what? If you notice, I use basic vocabulary. Okay, your turn. Tell me about your neighborhood. How did it used to be? The weather used to be amazing too. Mm -hmm. Daniel? <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, no, Daniel wants to talk, I know. Daniel, where did you grow up? Me. <laughs> okay, I remember the the Christmas when I have a ten or twelve years, and we at at the midnight, the and me in my in my brothers, two brothers and me, and uh, another neighbor neighborhood, no. The famous house say, make, make, neighbors, 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 yes. We um, crack them or lemon almost. Uh, we, oh, we used to burst fireworks. Fireworks, yes, uh, 12. But, but the big, big fireworks. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> at, at midnight, wow, it was amazing, it like a bomb. And two, and two or three times. Oh, okay. Twelve, 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 twelve uh, fire crop, fireworks. It beat fireworks. <laughs> all, the, all the, all the neighborhood, don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it. No, 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 it's, it's Christmas, it's, in oh my happy god. Happy New Year. Let's go. <laughs> didn't you have yeah. didn't you have words? Words with silvadores? With whistlers? Yes, yes, yes. I, I we, we have a word, yes, exactly. But what I remember the the, the silvador uh -huh. close. It's my oh. oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I, I waiting for I waited a uh, for uh, you were waiting for the whistle. Yeah, exactly. I waited for a whistle. 
boom. <laughs> it exploded on your hand. Wow. Yes, it's no, no, no great, no good, no good uh, run. No, it, it, it no was to come, no was uh, another, another run, another run. So oh, oh run I got there. you. Man, but, but fireworks, fireworks were good. They, I'm sorry, yes. fireworks used to be good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it used to be good back in the days. Back in yes, the exactly. days. Yes, exactly. Yes, I, I remember it. Not I anymore. remember when um, after the, the midnight, uh, we go to uh, another another neighbor, neighbor to dance at uh, at 5 a.m. we go back to the to the house. <laughs> we used to we used to go back home. Yeah, back home. Yes, yes. We used to <laughs> we used to go back home. Try to use it. We we used to back home. We used five. to go. We used to go back home. We used to go back home at 5 a.m. <laughs> Drunk? Yeah. No, no. Oh, as a kid, as a kid. Oh, That's okay. A kid, yes. That's okay. A kid, ten, ten years, twenty years. Mm -hmm. not, okay. Not drunk. <laughs> no drinking. Yeah, that was good. Yes, okay. Me. Good. Thank you, Daniel. Who's next? Daniel, who is next? Let me see. There you go. Another a woman. A woman. Um, Erika Jasmine. Or Ruth Gisela. Where is Gisela? Ah, Ruth Gisela. Ruth Gisela. Are you there? Uh, <laughs> I remember. I don't remember this moment. At this moment. Okay. Somebody else. Just one more person, guys. I'm just making some time so you can warm up. Try to use the grammar. I used to. I used to. You know what I used to love? doing and and the, what i remember the most is on saturdays saturday mornings were were heaven for me after delivering the bread in the morning at 5 6 a.m we used to get home with my brother and do you remember the arena vasos right i'm gonna say that that way the arena cops and then carla ivan come on nelson the arena cups. So one arena cup, it was white, you know, always, right? So full of coffee. And we we made competition with my brother to see who ate more bread with coffee. Mm, but the bread was hot, hot bread. Oh my God. And we, we don't tell anybody, but we used to watch Nouvelles. Remember <laughs> Nouvelles? Yes. Man, it's just <laughs> cartoons. Okay. cartoons. Cartoons were cartoon. amazing back in the days. Cartoons were amazing. Um, Jardin Infantil, right? That was no, right. that was Sunday. Yeah. That was Sunday. Yeah. Channel two. <laughs> Channel two. But the cartoons we we used to watch Jardin Jardin Infantil because of the cartoons. This Nerf. Uh, I I remember. Um, oh, mi monstrito. I don't know, right? The gummy bears, oh, sweet, eh? all cartoon, that. Other cartoon. The, 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 was in Sunday. Was on Sunday, yeah. The same thing on Sundays. Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, of course. After... Remember, remember when a uh, Finnish class uh -huh. in um, uh, October, maybe. Mm. Oh, um, when when classes were over. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh in in, in TV. Uh, watch uh, the. Eh, gente chica. Yes. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, yes, yeah. I remember. Wow. Yeah, you, you, you can see the you can see different cartoons, uh, candy, oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Candy. I, I yeah. Yeah. But not even car not just cartoons. You remember Saved by the Bell? Um, um, yes, exactly. The Wonder Years. Yeah, the Wonder Years. <laughs> I, I believe that that theory really built us. Many of us were built by by Arnold, Kevin Arnold. Kevin Arnold. We were yes. built. We were built. Remember, remember the, this uh, the the channel Nickelodeon. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Those Nickelodeon were. is. Uh, they're the used to. They're used Rugrax, to. Rugrats. Rugrats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really, Daniel? You watch yeah. those cartoons? I, I, I see. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> Nelson, did you watch those cartoons? Yes, yeah, teacher. I remember that I used to be the Rocket Power. Ah, the Rocket yeah. Power. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The monsters. You remember the monsters? Yeah. Yes, and I and I remember to MacGyver. 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 The Renegado. The Do Renegade. Remember? Yes, the Renegade. I remember the Renegade. I remember Jay. Captain Flash. Jay, team. And also Highlander. I remember Highlander too. Man, Highlander, that series was amazing. Yeah, those yes. were those were good times. There are there are not so many cartoons, so many good cartoons nowadays. There used to be good cartoons. No, one cartoon that I that I, that I, used, I used to be was uh, Hickley. Heathcliff, yeah. The Silverhawks, the Thundercats. Thundercats. <laughs> wow. Those were good times. Ulysses 31, of course. Do you notice that only we, we only boys are talking right now? The girls are not talking? Girls <laughs> didn't used to watch TV, I can tell. I love it. Ulysses 31. <laughs> oh, okay. It's on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. It's on YouTube. You can watch all, the whole series. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And they are planning a movie. Ah, uh, no. Yes, okay. a, a live action movie of Ulysses is coming. Okay. I'm waiting for it. But every day I I feel sad because he never never come to the hairs. He did. Always he was lost. Lost. He was lost all the time. Okay, you can do that. He used to be lost all the time. He used to be lost all the time. He used to be looking for Earth, for a way to Earth. He used to be looking for a way to Earth all the time. You see, that that's the way you use that. Good. Okay, I tr I'm trying to cheer you up. Let's move on with the topic for tonight. Okay, but what I would like to do is give you the topic so you can split it apart and talk about it talk about the topic um about choosing the right um what are the ele the elements to consider when you are selecting a training option we kind of discussed this before if you remember the different training options and what you have to consider but this time we're going to do it from a perspective of your company and if you don't have a clear picture of your company, then make it up. Let me give you an example. What we what they are expecting, you know, from us tonight is to talk about what considerations we should have depending on the niche of market where our company moves. Okay, uh, me dejan saber si se pierden alguna palabra. I'm sorry. Okay, niche of market. Yeah, that's yeah. easy. Yeah. Niche of market. Okay, so, uh huh, yeah. good. So, 
in my case, let's talk okay. about Inglés Corporativo. Inglés Corporativo moves on the niche of market. Which niche of market do you think we move on? Service. Services of what kind? Service of oh, us. Okay, education. Education. Education is our is our niche of, of market. Okay, so, but from that perspective, we not only we not only have teachers, but also have the administrators. One thing that became crucial crucial when training the the workforce in English corporativo has always been training the administration uh, co-workers in English. I mean, we were teaching English, so they're supposed to know English, right? If you go to any academy, you expect the employees to speak English. At least the basic, you know, the reception is to say, hello, good morning, how are you? Okay, and etc. cetera, right? Um, or to know about Excel, because we also teach about advanced Excel and all that. So you will expect them to, to know about these topics. That was one thing. The second thing that we all need in English Corporativo and have is people skills. How to treat people, how to treat others. Sounds not essential, but it is because everybody is your customer among our co-workers in the company and not just the students, but also people from Insafor, people inside the job, you know, they are customers, internal, external customers. Um, we may need some, we needed some sales training because at the beginning in 2016, 2020, you know, some, some years ago, there were no sales campaign. Do you think we sell something? What do you think? Do you think that English Corporativo sells something? Service. Mm -hmm. Nelson is not in. Nelson? No, we don't we don't sell. Daniel sells services, okay. We do sell. We sell two things. Number one or branding, if you have a company, just the brand of your company becomes a sale. If you represent your company, you're selling. Makes sense, right? You're selling. Number two, we have to look for you, for clients, for customers. That's the way we survive. I mean, if we don't have students, even if the courses are free, we have to hunt. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a sell, you know, convincing people to study for free. It is a sell. It's not easy. Sometimes I used to think that it was more difficult, you know, because many years ago, I used to help. I used to go with the flyers to the companies and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we have these courses are free with Insafwerp. And they go, they used to go like, nah, people don't go, you know, they, they just don't attend the classes. And okay. <laughs> it was difficult. As a teacher, when I, when everything was live, you know, presential classes, it was better in many ways in that sense, because people used to attend the class, sign the, the papers every day, every day. I used to push my students more, make sure they were there. And that's another thing. Teachers, they we need training. We need training. Now, what kind of training we need? Again, people skills, techniques to teach, uh, teaching approaches, that's what you call it. Pronunciation, believe it or not. I mean, you are the judges, right? You can compare my pronunciation with a previous teacher, right? And go like, man, this teacher, uh, I mean, about me, right? You can go like, ah, the teacher used to talk better. It is what it is, right? You can compare. So, and so on. So we need, we can even have grammar classes 
for sure. Some of us, some teachers may need grammar classes. So based on that, um, what I will do nowadays, nowadays is have a, a training like this in a virtual environment and also prepare for the future. Do a live training to make the classes more dynamic how to convert this class in a more dynamic methodology. If you noticed, just the simple act of asking you a, an interesting question, something that may cause curiosity in you, creates the, the, the dynamism you know, on the class. You're not falling asleep. And it's different if I just keep talking, 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 talking. That's boring, right? So these are the kind of things that I will do. Definitely a virtual environment right now because of the way we're working. How does this work? It works pretty well, actually. Okay. Now, uh, if you remember training options we had, something that I will definitely do in this uh, niche of market is go one by one. Me? connecting to the classes of my coworkers, just watching them deliver the class and learning and maybe provide feedback later. Uh, that's what I used to do as a manager. I used to go in the classroom, watch the class for five, 10 minutes, take notes, see how much time the teacher speaks and the students talk, you know, important and then take over we used to have a a sign you know uh, the the marker on the class the marker used to be like the torch if you have the marker you're in control of the class uh, then I used to go okay give me the marker and you sit and I teach and that means look watch learn okay and then the feedback. So that, that used to be the best methodology, one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. Nowadays in virtual classes, the best way to go is shadowing, just looking at someone do things. Because in my opinion, there's no better way to teach someone something than showing him how to do it, right? Through the eye, just learning how to do things. Do we agree? Yep. Okay, so basic things to consider when you are selecting a training option is what is your product? What is your niche of market? Okay, and of course, who is your client? What kind of customer do you have? So do you remember the types of training we discussed previously on the class? Yep, no. <laughs> kind of. We had the on-site trainings, the online trainings, and the off-site trainings. We also had the, uh, oh my God, the hybrid. Uh-huh. Online trainings, uh -huh. Vir virtual conferences, and et cetera, right? So as group, we're going to work on that again, but this time you have to select one niche of market or as, as I have been talking, right? For example, in my case is education. Daniel, what's your niche of market on your company? Uh, my company is very complicated because it's a uh, your location when they use government. I'm sorry, uh, you work for the government? Mm, no, for, uh, for a base. Um, it's, uh, it's a little complicated. I, I, I prefer don't talk. <laughs> and not talk about it, okay. <laughs> yes, we, don't, we, we don't talk about Bruno, okay. <laughs> okay, Adriana, what do you say? Yeah, about my company, we have uh, the... We have like a B two B, and so we have to just to treat with other companies, and 
You got it? <laughs> yeah, oh, you're a system. recruiting a recruiting services company. Recruiting. Yes, we have to give okay, we sell um service for other companies and that's that's the way that it works. <laughs> okay, uh, Nelson, would you like to share something? No, teacher. No. Okay. So, but I think we we in all groups, you know, we could have one kind of service. So, based on that niche of market, as I did right now, what kind of needs would you cover on a training? And number two, more important, what training option will fit better for that niche of market or that type of company? You got it? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Be creative and select just one per group. Okay. Okay. So it's just going to be three groups. Okay. Let's go. Lucy, Jamie, please connect to your groups. Hello, teacher. Sorry, hi. Could you explain what is the, the, the topic? Right now. Please. Right away, right away. Mm -hmm. Let's set it up. This is part of it. Um, you need to prepare a short presentation about considerations you think are important depending on your niche of your market niche. That's one thing. As I explained to you, you know, what's gonna be select the niche of market. I mean, uh, Nelson can have an idea of what niche of market. Uh, Samantha or Vanessa too, but choose one. If none of you want to share the niche of market, make it up. Think about a business, about a business. Um, let's say mechanic, maybe, you know, mechanical workshops. Um, what else? Supermarkets. Think about it. Think about you own a supermarket. So what kind of training will be better 
people don't have time in supermarkets. There were supermarket workers never have the time to attend to a physical, a physical training. Do you think they can attend it? Mm. Virtual? Many of them work 10 hours, 12 hours in a row. So they will be falling asleep. <laughs> okay. So, and so on, right? What kind of training? Um, let's say the first aid training from the government, have you heard, right? It's a requirement, no. it's a requirement. So how how might they be doing in the supermarket? How are they conducting that training? Because it's a requirement for all employees to take that training. I don't know, picture it, create it. Now, that's what you have to consider. The prospect client, the profile of your employees, are they from low educational background? They don't have a computer at home, not even a cell phone sometimes. So how do you train these employees? What's the best option? Based on the types of training, go ahead. So we have to decide for one kind of training, then which which employees we are going to take this, this training. Yes, basically explain to the class, why are you choosing such training based on what? Well, you can start talking about the niche of market, is education, the type of employees that we have. They all have computers. In my case, education. All teachers have a computer. You know, they must. Okay, I I don't I don't I don't understand what is a market niche because it's like we are on HR department. So I don't. I oh. Don't understand the part of market. Think niche. think about what does your company do, El nicho de mercado. Right. So we are on the educational niche of market. You know, it's very extensive, very wide. Some niches are uh, confectioning clothes, for example. If you're on the niche of market of women underwear, like my wife, or, or dressing, you know, clothes, that could be another niche of market. Electricity, people working on electrical connections. You got it? No. No, el nicho de mercado es como que los rubros de mercado está eh, no solo puede ser ventas, no, aún en ventas hay muchos nichos de mercado. Ventas de qué? De comida, de artículos de limpieza, artículos para el hogar, eh, ventas de hay tanta cosa, comida rápida, right? Esos son los nichos de mercado. Eh, solo tendrían que haber visto en básico, no, intermedio 5. Ok, eh, bueno, igual, eh, de servicios hay muchos nichos. El nicho bancario, todos los bancos, eh, los nichos de, de, de mecánica, automotriz, mecánica automotriz, pesada es otro nicho de mercado. O sea, todos esos son segmentos de, del mercado y dentro de cada, ellos, de cada uno de ellos, pues están los diferentes negocios que sirven a esos rubros de mercado. Hoy sí. Like intermediarios. ¿Perdón? Intermediarios. Proveedores. Proveedores. Uh -huh. O sea, dependiendo del mercado que tengamos, así va a ser la capacitación de nuestros empleados. Exacto. ¿Qué necesidad hay en, eh, dependiendo del nicho de mercado, no? Porque um, será útil para una empresa que tiene un taller, o sea, venden llantas, reparan carros, o sea, un taller. Eh, ¿Qué necesidad podrá tener de entrenamiento? Pues servicio al cliente sería muy útil. Ventas también, entrenamiento en ventas, entrenamiento en servicio al cliente, entrenamiento en recursos humanos, ok, leyes laborales, porque los empleados deben de estar al tanto ¿no? de cómo funciona todo etcétera, ¿no? So, ahora bien, ya decidí, ya vi cuál es el nicho, ya vi qué entrenamiento voy a proporcionarles, ahora, ¿qué tipo de entrenamiento escojo? Si lo voy a hacer en la empresa, de manera virtual, ¿ok? Y etcétera, ¿no? Los que hemos visto. That's the point. Okay. Ahora bien, ¿por qué voy a elegir ese entrenamiento? ¿Qué tipo de empleados tengo? Pues, o sea, tengo una empresa de 25 empleados, no es grande, ¿ok? Ahora, esto me lo puedo imaginar, ¿no? Eh, el 10% o el 30, 40% de los empleados vienen de, 
de Xochimilco, no sé dónde, y pues no tiene ni computadora, ni celular. Ellos, a ley tengo que darles entrenamiento. Me explico, o sea, ese es el tipo de detalles que se deben de considerar. Ok. Ok. Good. Let me go with another group. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Are we lost? No, no. I am here. <laughs> oh, yes. I I'm mean, here. Ivan can help a lot. Daniel, as well, with the experience. Um, good. And I said al grupo, al, al grupo anterior, al uno, que ahí está, ¿no? En el chat, pero más a grosso modo, empezar de lo. Um, de lo. ¿Qué sería lo opuesto de abstracto? Real? No. De lo general a lo abstracto. Vamos de lo general a lo abstracto. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Lo general, ¿cuál es el nicho de mercado en el cual se mueve o se moverá mi empresa si me la voy a inventar, ¿no? ¿Sí? ¿Qué nicho de mercado es el que, el que aborda? ¿Qué es un nicho de mercado? Un rubro, un segmento del mercado. Hay diferentes maneras de llamarle, pero está bien delimitado por el tipo de actividad que lleva a cabo la empresa. Es decir, ¿a qué sector de la sociedad sirve los servicios o los productos que produce la empresa? Uh, en base a eso, voy a determinar mi población, mi, de mis, el perfil de mis empleados, el perfil de mis clientes, qué tipo de clientes tengo. Eh, y determinar, ¿no? Ok, los empleados. Tengo 25 empleados, la mayoría viven en Usulután y viajan en San Salvador todos los días, exagerando, ¿eh? Eh, son gente de escasos recursos, no tienen computadoras, muy probablemente me toque un entrenamiento físico. ¿De qué quiero entrenar? Bueno, eh, el perfil de mis clientes son clientes del escalón. Y los productos sí se venden, o sea, el producto se defiende por sí solo, pero el, la fuerza laboral que tengo no está capacitada para atender a la señora de escalón que me viene a comprar siempre. ¿Sí me explico? O sea, ¿Qué entrenamiento le voy a dar a esta persona? consideraciones, ese es el punto del, del tema de esta noche, ¿qué consideraciones debo de tomar para elegir un entrenamiento? Pues primer, primordialmente el tema que voy a dar ¿no? y luego me encargo de ver en base a las necesidades de mis clientes y de mis empleados cómo voy a entregar el training qué tipo de metodología de entrenamiento voy a elegir que es las que están ahí, ¿no se acuerdan? si es uno a uno si va a ser presencial Entonces, yo les estoy dando un ejemplo burdo, ustedes pueden crear lo que quieran ¿Ok? O sea, que el, el training va orientado a, al personal de la empresa. Course, para man. poder desarrollar una mejor labor de venta o de servicio. Para no. ¿Sí? Es que de que ustedes se la jueguen, que piensen. Sí, que sean creativos y digan, bueno, mira, y si decimos que el 40% de, de nuestros empleados, de hecho, son gente eh, iletrada. Tienen más de cuarto grado pero son buenos para las ventas. Mm. Ok, ¿y qué le falta entonces? <ríe> o sea, y ustedes van eluc elucubrando qué es lo que van a decir. ¿Ok? Ok. ¿Qué? Ok, ok. Ok, cualquier cosa me escriben y yo regreso, ¿ok? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I didn't know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Architects. Engineers. Super good. I don't need to explain anything here. Good job. <laughs> In the first moment, we were lost. <laughs> of course. It's not easy. Is it? Is it complex topic is a little complex Carlita I think that your fan is interfering with your microphone yes but the hat is the heat the heat is <laughs> hot <laughs> the heat is hot yes That, that's like saying yeah. está fuerte la calor. 
<laughs> yes, I and uh, I have a, a air condition in my room, but it's, it's I am in, in my room. It's uh, I, I feel I, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, when I, <laughs> I feel sleepy. I, I get sleepy. I, I, I get sleepy. I get sleepy. I got you. I get sleepy. Mm -hmm. And I have I have to stay in the in the in the living room, but here there is no a condition. And in San Miguel is. Oh my it's God! You're in hot. San Miguel. Yes, that's hot. Yes, because I I I work in San Miguel and I I I stay here eleven days in a row and I rest only three days. Wow. Two weeks. But you like your job? Yes, I like. Okay. Bien, super rápido. Uh, I, se, am, se I, I don't know what to say. Uh -huh. No, 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 dígame. Tell me, tell me. Uh, I always uh, have work, have work in a project uh, uh, out to San Salvador. Out of El Salvador, out of San Salvador. Wow. Yes. That that has to be amazing. That's awesome. Yes, Bien. I like Bre brevemente I les like quería. In pro, in... <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> es que como que lo que voy diciendo le llega de último. <laughs> A veces pasa eso. <laughs> A ver, brevemente, considero el nicho de mercado, ¿qué, uh, ¿qué rubro de mercado es el que mi empresa sirve o provee un servicio o vende un producto? En base a eso, eh, me fijo en el perfil del cliente, o sea, de ahí viene, ¿no? ¿Qué es lo que estoy haciendo? ¿Qué servicios proveo? ¿Qué productos vendo? Eh, y en base al perfil del cliente puedo determinar el, el um, ¿qué era? ¿Perfil, no? ¿Cómo lo llamé? Eh, sí, el perfil de los empleados. Empleaditos, ajá. Ah, perdón, el prospecto de los clientes, en base al prospecto de los clientes, puedo definir el perfil de los empleados, mm. qué tipo de empleado necesito, que tengo, que tengo en ese momento y creármelo, ¿no? Si no quiero hablar de mi empresa, pues hablo de en general, eh, puedo crearme un empleado que, que, como dice Carla, ¿no? Vive en San Miguel y viaja todos los días a Sao Sulután para ir a trabajar, eh, una esposa, una, tengo el 60% de mis empleados son de escasos recursos, con bajo nivel de escolaridad, sin embargo, son mi fuerza de ventas. <ríe> y sirven a, 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 a clientes del escalón. Oh, wow, ok. Quizá por eso las ventas andan en un 60% de lo esperado. Ok, ¿qué necesitarán? Estará fallando ahí. Soy creativo y empiezo a ver, ¿no? El, de ese 60% de empleados que son de escasos recursos y todo esto, eh, baja escolaridad eh, el 40% de mi fuerza la, de ventas son gordos oh my god ya voy y no se visten bien mm. comen con las manos mm. hay varias cosas ahí que ya toque ¿cómo abordo eso? ¿qué tipo de entrenamiento necesito? ok, ya definí el tema que voy a abordar en el entrenamiento ¿Cómo lo voy a entregar? Esta gente pasa en la calle todos los días. ¿Cómo hago? Ok. Y ahí viene la, la situación que es lo que estamos trabajando. ¿Ok? ¿Qué, ¿De qué manera? Todo esto es lo que tengo que considerar y de poner aquí en la presentación y definir al final. Por eso hemos optado por ese entrenamiento. ¿Make sense? Ok. It's... Suena entonces, exagerado, pero... <risas> entonces tenemos que detectar un problema uh -huh. y dependiendo de ese problema que hayamos detectado en, en algún perfil en específico, pues proponer un entrenamiento. Uh -huh. Sí, okay. exacto. Porque lo que vimos en la clase anterior, ¿no? En las necesidades de entrenamiento, ¿sabes? las identificaste, chico, pero ¿cómo, cómo las atacas? O sea, ¿qué entrenamiento sale mejor para el tipo de perfil de empleado que tenés? 
que es lo que en realidad va a atacar esa necesidad, ¿no? Más efectivamente, porque yo puedo en un entrenamiento virtual sobre primeros auxilios, pero... <risa> o sea, solo yo le voy a estar haciendo el muñequito para que resucite y, y todo bien. ¿no? O sea, no. <risa> ok. O me voy a vestir, me voy a ir vistiendo, le voy a enseñar cómo hacer un nudo de corbata. Y ahí vaya, dele a usted. Ahora. Ah, no, 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 no es así. O sea, no sé. <risa> so, that's the point. Ok. Okay. Good. Keep going. I'll be here. Okay. Do you have an identified a problem <laughs> in your in your uh, company, Carl? <laughs> Uh, the microphone is off. <laughs> I was talking a lot. <laughs> Don't worry. Y si mejor lo hacemos en, enfocado al en marketing, es que en, en esta rama eh, ya hay entrenamientos para cada tipo de trabajo que uno quiere, por ejemplo, en calidad, otro de calidad, en ambiente, para supervisión, para todo hay entrenamientos que lo da, digamos, la Asociación Salvadoreña de Ingenieros y Arquitectos. Entonces, si nosotros detectamos problemas, tendríamos que mandar a la gente a entrenamientos, no se los damos nosotros. Por ejemplo, yo nunca he recibido un entrenamiento de la empresa y ni nunca he sabido que dan alguno. <risas> How to storage package? Maybe how handle the product? Mm -hmm. How handle, handle, handle the product? The box is the bag. The the equipment 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 equipment
topic to the warehouse. ¿De qué más lo vamos a capacitar además del basic English? How to how to how to sell a coffee to uh, clients? How to how to prepare? No, porque ya lo tienen, ya saben cómo hacen, cómo son, con maristas ya. In relationship with the with the customer in, in, customer in service yeah. mm -hmm. yes customer service mm -hmm. okay this is what the service will be on will be on site training on the OXA, on the job train, job shadow wings, job shadow wings. The chair. Hey. Sorry. Uh, what else? What I'll is a, a job shadow wing? What's a job shadow wing? You are working and I'm just looking at you work how you do things i'm your shadow and and trabajos así presenciales tiene un empleado sentado a la par de usted y por qué hiciste eso ah precio es eso ah oh. once so one just your shadow tu sombra ahí a la par is watching um, you. Mm -hmm. sí, ¿Cómo sería ese tipo de capacitación? Oh, no. Uh, it's a training where you are taught by someone else. Uh, mm -hmm. A tenure, a tenure worker, un trabajador con años de trabajar con experiencia, tenure worker, eh, te guía, ¿no? Y te va diciendo cómo hacer las cosas paso a paso. Yo lo veo más como parte de un entrenamiento de inducción. Como la parte de inducción, o sea, la parte final del entrenamiento. Porque primero usualmente te enseñan lo teórico, ¿no? Cómo se hacen mm -hmm. las cosas. Y después, para que lo veas, te sentás con una persona a la par y le haces sombra. Mm -hmm. Después de eso, ya es hands-on training. Creo que ya está... Ajá, uh, job, parece que se llama. Mentorship programs, esto es muy similar al mentorship program, el, el job shadowing. Pero después viene el, el hands-on training. O sea, ya la persona que te está enseñando se vuelve tu sombra. Tú vas a hacer lo que él estaba haciendo, pero él está a la partida y te dice, mm, mm, mm. ahí no, es acá. Ah, sí, sí. Okay. ¿Ya? Mm -hmm, ok. I got it. <laughs> this is very used in call centers as well. A lot. Yeah, I can imagine. The, the difference now is that you have 25 agents virtually watching you move the screens, you know, go through the systems and everything. And they're just looking at you, your screen. And then they go like, why did you do that? Oh, because this is in there. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's that's mm -hmm. it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, are you setting up something? A presentation or something? Mm, no. Hmm. Just, Only talking. Okay. But have you decided the, the niche of market, the type of employee that you are going to work with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you need me, let me know. Okay.
para el Teacher, this is okay or not? Is this okay or not? Uh, yeah, it's beautiful actually. Thank you. And in the part of employee profile, we have to write the characteristics of the employees or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Characteristics sure. of your or your your profile of employees. He poor, doesn't have a computer, maximum of I don't know, bachelor degree or ninth grader. Nelson. Uh, how do you mean when you say consider prospect client? The profile. Uh, it's like what kind of customers do you have? Are they from Escalon, Soyapango? I mean what's their background? Are they professionals? Are they mid-class, the mid-class sector? You know, that could be very extensive, the mid-class sector of San Salvador, of Santana. Okay. Mm -hmm. We almost finished. Good, good. Okay. Teacher, and how do you say, no sé, como bodeguero, no sé. Pero nosotros así le decimos a los encargados de bodega, como bodeguero, o no sé. I know, I know. It's, it's like a warehouse shift. Warehouse shift. Shift. Warehouse shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the boss, the boss of the warehouse, the main in charge. Warehouse auxiliary. <laughs> okay. Why? Do you, do you have something else? No. Okay. Same. Mm -hmm. I know. Warehouse auxiliary. Yes, uh, yes. Or auxiliary. Uh -huh. By how chief, uh, not uh, chief. Chief. Yeah, chief. Yeah, chief. Yeah, chief. <laughs> Okay. Shift. 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 And that's shift. Auxiliary could be bachelor. 
सक्सेस अच्छी है Turistas, to, tourists, tourists located, tourist national. Um, eh, teacher, como, eh, como se dice amigos del ambiente? Friend, friend, un ambiente amigable? Ajá. No, no, que, no. que, que protegemos la, el medio ambiente. Oh, o sea, está, ok. Por ejemplo, reciclar. Uh -huh. Friends of the reciclar. environment. Ah, yeah. uh, Porque es friendly environment. No, fr friendly environment. Hold on. Friendly with the environment. Amigable con el medio ambiente. Friendly with the environment. Pero eso se dice cuando un producto es amigable con el medio ambiente. Podría ser, a company is, we are a company, uh, a friendly with the environment company. We are a friendly with the environment company, por ejemplo. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y que nosotros mantenemos, bueno, que nuestra empresa se mantiene con buena higiene. Por ahí hablaban de inocuidad. ¿Cómo sería? Mm -hmm. Sería la like expresión uh, food safety. Food safety. Uh -huh. Food safety. Oh. Oui. Inocuidad alimentaria. Something oh. like that. that. That's good, actually. Food safety. We are... Uh... Approved, a, a safety food approved company. What are you trying to say? Que están intentando decir, throw me the whole thing. <laughs> que, que nosotros eh, también no, nos van a dar como capacitaciones que tenemos que tener un buen buena salud, gozar de buena salud para manipular los alimentos. Y mm -hmm. que también nuestros alimentos van mm -hmm. a tener la buena higiene para servirlos y que no sean productos vencidos. Pero es todo eso queremos decir. If we are in 
good standing with her health. Oh. We will serve with healthy food. We save food healthy. Okay. Like that, if we are in good standing with our health, we will serve healthy and good, safe food. That could be it. Are you, are you almost done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay so we're back we're back okay group number one is composed by jamie jolman um samantha nelson and vanessa are you ready to present Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay, good. You will set the pace. You set the pace. No, pace, pace, pace. You'll set the pace. You'll set the pace. What's meaning? Say the pace. Fijar el paso. Fijar el paso. Como son los primeros, van a fijar el paso. Abrir brecha. Okay. Everybody else, please pay attention to your classmates. I'll make you questions, okay? One, two, three, action. Okay, teacher. Uh, uh... We decide about our warehouse and we we have the company Cesar Export and Import has a warehouse with 50 employees. And in beach in this warehouse we have a lot of a lot of products. We don't we didn't decide about uh, exactly product. We have um different kind of product. And and for us, it's important to know uh, how to handle the product and the safety rules in it. So for the employees, we decide uh, different topics that they have to know uh, before 
working with with the company and to rephrase for the all all employees the these kind of topics so we decided to to train in how to use a power flip because it's a it's a necessary equipment or mach or machinery to to do the 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 job because we have uh, the company has all of racks so uh, it's important to know how to use it who what are the the parts of a forklift and another topic is stow in rack uh, how to pack and ship properly handle the product because we have a lot of box bags etc uh, the safe the safe the safety real rules like the how to use a extinguisher how to act in emergency and the the most important I think it's the equipment personal protection because in this kind of in this kind of warehouse it could happen any any um, there are a lot of risks so. We we can suffer any emergency, so it's important that personal is its safety with the equipment personal protect. So this is a a, a very important part uh, to to use in the warehouse. And uh, then a uh, the first the the employee have have to know how to apply the, the eight first in case of emergency also, and management inventory, and the process of export and import. Because we receive the products, it, it could be from another, another country, and we have to sell the products. So it's important that the employees know about this, this process. And then for the manager, the person have to know about the business administration and team building. And we decide about a training, uh, on-site training, because it's necessary to, uh, to necessary to know about the the theory and the most important the practice because. Uh, it's I think it's a uh, difficult uh, to explain uh, how to to handle the inventory only uh, for online. I think it's better to make it in in the place of the action of course. So I think it's uh, it's important to to make it on site so the employees have to participate in. A activities for make it dynamic in order to learn all the processes and make sure that they understand and can apply it. It's important to to know each topic in order to make the the work the better way and avoid any any problem or or any any risk that that can happen if they don't don't accomplish all the rules that they have to apply. And for example, the training explains to employees what are the parts of our forklift and how to operate. And the employee profile for the warehouse shift, uh, the person has to be in an engineer or with a degree in business administration and the warehouse auxiliary it could be bachelor the person has to 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 be well in math and to be proactive to in order to to learn all the topics that they had to to apply in the place of work and that's it Okay, good job. To warn forklift, forklift, mm -hmm. fork, forklift, fork, forklift. Okay. Um, the second word, extinguisher. Extinguisher. Uh, ex. Uh huh. Extinguisher. 
extinguisher. Extinguisher. Uh huh. Extinguisher. Uh, export process, import process. You don't need uh, the apostrophe and the S. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Export process, import process. Okay. Uh, da -da. This is a ministry. I I'm wondering. Maybe I got lost, but do I need a profile, a such such a high profile for the forklift operator? I mean, or your intention is for everybody to know how to operate a forklift? Yes, sure. I I think it's necessary for all all the employees in the warehouse. So we ah. we we said that we have. 50 employees in all the warehouse because it's big. <laughs> oh, and some of them are engineers or have a degree yeah, in business we administration. Have one, only one shift. For oh, the I got you. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the chief is, yeah, an engineer or has a degree. Okay. Thank you. It was really amazing, actually. Uh, let me see what time is it. Nine, no, we're having four minutes only. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Noemi. Vanessa, I'm sorry, for presenting. Who's next? Um, what do you think? We still have time, three minutes at least, or four for the next group. Daniel, Erika, Fatima, and Ivan. Okay. Um... In the words, simple. <laughs> In simple words? In simple words, uh, our business is a cafeteria. The locator is on the, the Ruta de las Flores. Uh, or, or market niche, uh, niche de mercado, market, what? Market niche. Market niche, thank you. Or market niche is a national and for hire tourists. Uh, the here the hiring the the employees is the uh, the area the area the the, the business uh, the training will be at the barista English the customer service uh, the Thai the training is a uh, uh, what do you say uh, one side training. Uh, on the job training, the different uh, training, the customer service, English, the barista. Okay. So what, what kind of employees do you have? We have Thank employees with, the, with the experience in, in, in barista. Who, who these people who who need needs to to be native of the area of the restaurant of the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they know That's how the, to operate the the machinery. They know what to do. Yes, exactly. They, we we have we need a barista with. Uh, at least one year of experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how, how are you going to develop the training? I'll say. How are you going to develop the training to deliver the training? Uh, on, mm -hmm. the, on the on the on the on the site on the site and the on the restaurant. Yes. Delivery delivery service delivery. Delivery service. Okay. Delivery service. Delivery oh. service. Okay. Do they know? In the, in, in the, the training of, of English lessons mm -hmm. is with English Corporativo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good job. Okay. Thank you, guys. I, I know that was simple. It's okay. I understand um, what you did. Good job. At least, uh, you know, it's, it's important. I hope you understood. Tomorrow we will have the last group. Please don't miss your class, Adriana, Hector, Francisco, Carla, and Lucy. I'm going to do something. Hold on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
I was doing this once and one of the students said, no teacher, no clavation teacher, no. I was like, what? No clavation. <laughs> no clavation. Porque les estaba, les estaba diciendo tarea, tarea. So like, no teacher, no clavation teacher. What? Okay. So tomorrow we will have the last group. Thank you guys. I'm staying tonight with Carla Lorena just for 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Miss Leiva. Everybody else, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Adriana, Jose, Serna, Durán. Present. Good night. Daniel, Antonio, Luna. Present. Thank you. Erika, Jasmine, Martinez, Carpio. Present. Thank you. Fátima, Denise, Aguilar, Marquez. Present. Thank you. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present. Excellent. Ivan Petrovic, Guzmán Aquino. Present. Thank you. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Joelman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Good night. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Thank you. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. She's there. Nelson Antonio Rodas Rosales. Present. Thank you. Ruth Isela Joaquín Flores. Present. Thank you. Good night. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Thank you. And Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Thank you. Good English, by the way, Vanessa. Great job. See, Thank you, you. <laughs> See you tomorrow, guys. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. <clears throat> hmm. Some people don't want to leave. <laughs> Hold on. So, esta es la primera vez que que eh, estoy con ustedes y usualmente cuando eso ocurre uh, lo que hago es hacer tres preguntas en las primeras sesiones en eh, la primera y todas están relacionadas por cierto entonces la primera es que cuál ha sido su experiencia con, con el inglés o sea de dónde viene esto de, de dónde viene sin mencionar nombres de academia pea? de andar rebotando en la vida aprendiendo inglés dentro de ese ir y venir ha, ha identificado claramente cuál es su área de oportunidad, o sea, qué es lo que siente usted que le hace falta, es, la, es hablarlo, escribirlo, entenderlo o escucharlo, qué, qué, qué será lo diferente, ¿no? Eh, la gramática. Todas las anteriores. <ríe> ok. <risa> Esta es la segunda. La, la tercera pregunta, que es la más importante, ¿Qué, ¿qué estoy haciendo yo, Carla? Aparte de recibir dos horas de clase con el corporativo, ¿qué más hago? Eh, sí lo hago, para para poder mejorar ¿no? y, y e ir mejorando esto de aprender inglés. ¿En orden contesta? Sí, sí, en español. <risa> no, en orden. Ah, en orden. Como guste, como guste. No se preocupe, es una conversación. Eh... Al principio, hace muchos años, quería aprender inglés porque si eh, trabajaba con la misma compañía que trabajo ahora, que es una compañía japonesa. Entonces, eh, cuando estaba en el diseño del puerto de Cutuco, pensé estar en la construcción, porque estaba en el diseño. Entonces sabía que para estar ahí tenía que saber inglés. Entonces, pero la construcción iba a ser en siete años. Entonces dije, ya tengo suficiente tiempo para aprenderlo. Pero nunca lo aprendí. Me metí un año a estudiar inglés. Y sí, aprendí un poquito, pero nunca lo practiqué. Entonces se me olvidó. Y después, este, sí, perdí oportunidades por eso. Pero después me fui a trabajar con una empresa italiana. Y con ellos trabajé como 17 años. Y hace como cuatro años volví a esa misma empresa japonesa. Mm. Siempre quise, pero nunca tuve tiempo. Entonces ahora que es en línea, 
siento que es, un, o sea, es un poco más fácil organizar el tiempo porque no tengo que ir a la academia. Entonces, todo eso. Entonces, ya ahora no lo hago más por un interés personal que profesional. Mm, eso cree usted Sí. <risa> <ríe> no, no sabe porque la suerte es que llega una oportunidad y se está preparado ¿no? y hasta Sí, ahorita lo que pasa es que esas oportunidades ya pasaron. ah, no sabe, no sabe <ríe> uno no sabe sí, puede la verdad es que no sé, porque la empresa con la que yo trabajo es una empresa internacional. por eso alguien, no, siempre hay alguien viendo Carla, a eso me refiero siempre hay alguien viendo Y pues, por donde uno menos se imagina, ¿no? ¿Qué, qué falló? ¿Qué cree usted que falló en este tiempo de, de, de intentar aprender inglés? ¿Un año intentándolo? ¿Y qué pasó? No, sí, yo pienso que sí aprendí, donde yo estaba era más solo hablar, hablar, pero, pero quizás por lo mismo que le digo que en el trabajo siempre, el trabajo siempre ha sido bien pesado, entonces a veces uno no puede, a veces ir todos los días, a veces no le pone el mismo interés, o sea, un, un, varios factores que han influido. Uh -huh. ¿Usted trabaja en desarrollo de proyectos? Yo he trabajado en diseño de proyectos y en la construcción de proyectos, más que todo. En la ejecución. Ajá, en la ejecución de O sea, proyectos. la administración de los proyectos, digamos. No me lo No. imagino, no me lo imagino con una almagana. <risa> no, pero sí, o sea, supervisando eso que están con la armada, ¿no? que están haciendo paredes, que están haciendo calles, que están haciendo... Ahora imagínese Ahí si... con, con mi casco, ahí supervisando. ¿Qué hace En el cuando, gastón. qué hace, qué hace cuando, cuando se está quedando sin tiempo? Cuando las, los tiempos no se van cumpliendo. En la obra. Sí, en el proyecto. ¿Qué hace si, si se va quedando sin tiempo? Ya va llegando a la fecha límite. ¿De algún proceso o del proyecto en sí? Pues poner más recursos. Hmm. Más Okay. recursos, más personal, más maquinaria, más todo. Y en este caso, si le digo que ya no hay mucho tiempo para que aprenda inglés, ¿cómo hace? <risa> es que Pues todo es tendré un proyecto. que ser. Todo es Sí. un proyecto. Entonces, el tiempo nadie lo tiene. Sí, es cierto, o sea, se hace. <risa> Y entonces la tercera pregunta que está haciendo para abonar un poco al aprendizaje. Bueno, es, es, eh, me pongo a oír así de esos listening que ponen en, a veces escucho la clase, anterior, cuando no entiendo muy bien. Es, practico, pero poco con mis compañeros porque donde yo trabajo la mayoría hablan inglés. Deberían de hablar solo en inglés. ¿Ah? Deberían de hablar solo en inglés. No, entonces a veces ellos me llegan a hablar en inglés. No tengo que contestar. <ríe> y si no, les pregunto cómo se dice tal cosa y así. Pero el problema mío siempre ha sido que he tenido demasiado pena de equivocarme. O sea, porque no me gusta equivocarme. <ríe> entonces, ese ha sido el mayor problema. Que como no me gusta equivocarme, casi me da pena hablar con ellos. Pero últimamente, igual en clase, se me quitaba la pena porque aunque me equivoque, Eh, me corrige. <laughs> Pues sí, sí, es que, se, mire, eso es la cosa más, yo no pienso que es difícil, pienso que es fácil corregir la timidez. ¿Por qué la timidez no es nada más que el cerebro diciéndole a uno, no vas a poder? Cállate, no les, no, vas a hacer el ridículo, no. Se van a burlar. <risa> Entonces, ¿cómo se corrige eso? Convenciéndose uno mismo. A mí me decían en el 2014, cuando empezaba a dar clases, vos tenés mucho potencial, pero te falta una cosa, me dijo, una personita así pequeña me dijo eso, eh, creer en vos, el día que vos creas en vos, me dijo, que estás haciendo bien las cosas, mmm, vas a volar, tenía razón, el día que me lo creí, pum, me encendieron a gerente, o sea, así, 
empecé a hacer las cosas con más amor, con hasta tenía, te, siempre me, se reían a veces algunos profesores porque andaba una caja de herramientas. Pero dentro de la caja andaba borradores, limpios, andaba marcadores de colores, pelotas, un montón de cosas. Y ahí me trabaron el fixer, el, el, el arreglarlo todo, ¿verdad? arreglaba a los alumnos. Y así, pero, o sea, el punto es ese, creérselo. Ojo con lo que uno se repite a sí mismo, ¿no? Sí. Desde, que, desde que se levanta, ay, no, qué perezoso soy, no quiero. Creo que este es el problema con el inglés, que siempre he pensado que, 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 que es algo que me cuesta. Yo lo he pensado siempre. Ahí es el problema, decir me cuesta, no hombre, diga lo opuesto. No, por eso ahora ya lo pienso diferente, y ahora dije yo en este curso, bueno, voy a hablar, aunque hable mal, aunque no pueda hablar, pero si no, nunca voy a aprender. Y sigue diciéndose, no, 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 ya no diga no. <risa> diga, bueno, voy a hablar. De todos modos, no tengo que hacer. Ya. Pues sí. sí. Ajá, ya no, pero no digan no. Es que eso, eso, eso es cierto. <risa> Sabemos que nuestro cerebro funciona así, pero entre más decimos no, más realidad se vuelve la negativa. Sí, es cierto, yo sé. Bueno. Y siempre he podido hacer cualquier trabajo, entonces ahora me digo eso, entonces uh -huh. tengo que poder hablar inglés. Bueno, ánimo, ánimo, Carla. Gracias por acompañarnos en la clase. Cualquier cosa que necesite, ahí soy para servirlo, ¿ok? Bueno, gracias. Good night. Ya se puede ir al aire acondicionado en el cuarto. Sí, porque ya no lo aguanto el calor. Good bye. night. Bye, bye.